Alrighty, in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about Wi-Fi or internet while you're camping. And I know there's gonna be a whole bunch of people going, eh, you go camping to get away from that. No, I go to camping to get away from people like you. I actually like having internet when I'm camping. I like being able to read the news. I like being able to stream TV shows if I want to. It's actually a really handy thing. So a lot of people ask the question on Facebook pages and forums about what's the best way to improve your internet coverage while you're out in the bush. And the go-to answer for that is a Cellfi Go. And that's basically a mobile phone tower repeater that you can set up in your caravan or you can set up on your vehicle with an external antenna. And it boosts the signal of 3G or 4G selectable and will give everybody within range of that device a boosted 4G signal or a 3G signal, generally 3G to be honest. <laughs> And there's a few reasons why I didn't go for that setup. The first one is the cost. They're very, very expensive. I mean, by the time you've got an antenna and it's all set up, you're probably looking somewhere around the $1,000 mark. And that's a fair bit of coin. So I was looking for a cheaper alternative for that. But also, Telstra versus Optus in the bush is actually an interesting argument nowadays. Look, Telstra clearly wins, absolutely. But where I'm camping right now, we're actually getting three bars of Optus on our uh, internet setup, which I'll show you in a minute. And I'm only getting one bar of 4G on my Telstra SIM. So there is definitely times when Optus is better than Telstra when you're out in the bush. The other advantage of being able to use either of those service providers is that data is just way, way cheaper on Optus than it is on Telstra. And our allowable data on my Telstra SIM is only 40 gig for the month which can get chewed up pretty quick if you're streaming video, uploading YouTube, all that kind of stuff. So the second problem with the Cellfi Go is that they are network locked. You can buy one for Optus or you can buy one for Telstra, but you can't have both. And that's a bit of a problem. If you wanted to have both, you basically have to buy two Cellfi Goes and well, at thousand dollars each, that's just crazy. So the third issue is that you can't stream to a Chromecast. Let's have a look how we've got our TV set up here. Here's the TV in the Emu Expedition that we have here. Now, don't mind the wiring, it's messy on purpose because it makes it easy for us to transfer it outside to the outside mount when we want to, and really doesn't make much of a difference. So we have the TV set up with a Chromecast here, and we also have it plugged in to the um, AV system so that we can use the larger speakers. And we have the Chromecast just running down to one of the USB ports here. Um, you can run it off the TV, but we also use thumb drives in there for when we don't have any coverage. And the TV just plugs in with a 12 volt socket there. So this system works really well for us. We can watch it while we're in bed, or we can watch it when we're sitting over on the chairs here. It's just a really neat setup. But if we were using a cell phone Go and we had access on our phones for the internet, we still wouldn't have access for that Chromecast. And so we wouldn't be able to cast uh, YouTube, Netflix, Paramount, all that sort of stuff, which is what we like to do, especially when the winter, if it's raining outside and it's cold and miserable, there's nothing better than sitting in here and watching a bit of TV. How do we go about this? Well, first of all, we needed to get an antenna and that in itself was a little bit of a problem because I wanted it to go as high as possible to get the best range that we could. And I have seen people put them on top of their wine guard antennas. Now we do have a wine guard here. It um, was mounted on the Expedition already, so that's how we wind the WineGuard uh, TV antenna up and down. And to be honest, we've never ever used it because we don't watch free day at home and we're probably not going to watch free day out here either. But what I wanted to do was use that WineGuard antenna so that I could mount the 4G antenna on top and that way I would get as much height as I could. Height as might when it comes to radio, especially when we're talking about uh, microwave technology like mobile phones. Now, the problem with the WineGuard antenna on the Expedition is it's located right at the back, which means if I was to mount the antenna on top, when I would fold the antenna down, it would overhang the back of the caravan and that wouldn't be very good. So what I ended up going for was a marine boat type mount. It's a um, UV stabilized plastic mount and it can rotate up to 180 degrees and that allowed me to fold the antenna all the way forward 180 degrees over the top of the wine guard when we're traveling also gave me the advantage of being able to lift it up just 90 degrees so that i could have the antenna just at roof height if i didn't need the extra height say i was 
um, you know, in a caravan park in town. I just wanted a little bit of extra coverage. I can put it 90 degrees and then I can rotate it all the way back to 180 degrees and wind the wine guard up and have it sitting straight up. And so that was actually a really, really good solution. Just mounted a, the little clip that came with it down on the actual wine guard base. And it means it's a little bit fiddly. I've got to get up and stand on the wood box on the back to unhook it each time, but it's, it's not a big deal. So what have we hooked the antenna up to if we're not using a Cellfire Go? Well, we're using a Netgear Nighthawk. And these things are great. They are battery operated, but we don't run the battery in ours. We just have it plugged into the USB-C port and running off those same USB connectors where the Chromecast is running from. In fact, we don't even ever put the back clip on it because we're using it all of the time. Now, normally if you were to run a modem like a Netgear Nighthawk, this is just the M1 by the way, and we got this one for free. A, a friend gave it to us, but you can buy them for 150 bucks secondhand because they're old technology. And the thing is, the signal strength that we get out in the bush is very, very rarely worth having anything more substantial than the M1. And the M1 will stream video and do everything that you need to do. So there's really no need to go anything higher. But when most people run a modem in their caravan, they then need to go and buy an extra SIM and have another SIM plan and all of that kind of stuff. And that's just an added cost that I didn't want to have to go through for, you know, camping on the weekends or a big trip um, every few months. So what we do is we just pop the SIMs out of our phones and stick them into the uh, Netgear when we need it. And that works really well because your phone connects to Wi-Fi, it uses its own SIM via Wi-Fi, and everybody else can use your data who's sitting around camp. And if you want your friends to be able to use it, you can give them the password and they can join in as well. It means the Chromecast can connect and we can stream shows to the TV inside or outside of the caravan. And it just works really well. If you've got iPads or laptops or the kids are using tablets, or whatever, they can all join in on the Wi-Fi too. The other advantage of having the Netgear setup is that we can put an antenna on the roof rack of the car, which we're going to do soon, actually. And then we, um, because it's completely portable, we're just going to plug that USB power into the auxiliary uh, USB that I've got in the drawers in the back of the Land Cruiser and plug the antenna in. It takes two seconds. And that way, when we're traveling and Mela doesn't have any coverage with Optus, she can be using my Telstra SIM through the uh, through the modem. So that's going to be a really handy thing too. And sometimes we do day trips, like when we're at Lake Brockman, quite often we do day trips, we sit on the side of the lake for the day. And the problem there is that the coverage is sort of hit and miss. So if we're able to stick an antenna up on the car, everyone's got coverage, we can listen to music, all that kind of stuff. So that's really neat. Now, because Mela has Optus and I have Telstra, we can pick and choose which one we want to use. And this comes to another little trick. The Netgear Nighthawk modems, the M1s, are a Telstra device and they are set up for Telstra SIMs. So in order to be able to use them on Optus, you need to change some of the configuration settings. And what I've actually noticed, just even on this trip right now, if you're using Optus, there are two different APN settings that you might need to use. So I've entered both of them in, and I'll put them up on the screen here. But if you set these up, you can have the Telstra one that's already set up in the modem, and you can set up both the Optus ones, and that way you can change to whichever one's going to work. So what you do is you go into the settings, you select the APN setting that you want to use, hit set default and restart the modem. So once you put your Optus card in, you set the uh, Optus APN, try the first one, and restart the modem. If it doesn't work, go back into the settings, try the second one, restart the modem, and it'll probably work. And then if you go back to Telstra, just go into the APN settings, set the Telstra ones, click on default, restart the modem again. And that way you can use Optus or Telstra and get the best of both worlds. So with Mellors, we get the cheaper plan with way more data. And sometimes like here, we get faster service and more coverage. And other times when we're really remote or in, in just in some other random areas, we don't get any Optus coverage at all. And we switch over to my Telstra card and we're happy days, away we go. Set the APN settings to Telstra and we have full internet. So with this setup, it's going to cost you about $200 for an antenna, maybe $100 to $200 for a modem, and maybe, oh, you've got to buy the little um, uh, pigtail lead too. I'll show you that. I've actually pulled the, the drawer out of here, but you can see inside of here, we have the normal cable from the antenna, and it uh, goes to this little adapter here, which connects into these 
I think they're SMAs or SMCs, I'm not sure. I'll put it in the link in the description for you. And you can plug the antenna straight into the Nighthawk. I think you can get them on eBay for, you know, $10, $20. So all up, it's going to cost you maybe $200, 200 to $250 to get this kind of setup. That's, of course, if you do it yourself. So I'm just going to go show you through how I ran the cabling. Obviously, if you've got a different camper, caravan, car, whatever, your cable is going to be different to this, but this was the way that I ran it in here. So I've basically just drilled a very small hole here. And then, as you could see before, the cable comes through there and it just runs along behind all of these drawers here and then meets up with the uh, air conditioning power and the TV antenna, which is inside of this here. And it runs up through the pop top area, through the roof. And this roof is double skinned. So that was um, interesting. There's actually three holes at the top and they all meet up and go through this one hole. So it's a little bit fiddly to get through there, but not a major pain. And then on the top, we've just run the conduit along the roof, just the same as the TV antenna, um, because ultimately that's where it's going. And then it runs up the TV antenna um, right up to the top where the um, mobile phone antenna is. It had just enough cable to, to do that. That's pretty much the length that it was. So it was kind of perfect and it's just handy being right here because we get good coverage inside and outside of the caravan but we've also got um you know all the power and tv and everything all there as well so that just works out to be a nice neat setup we just always leave the good old paper clip there so we can change the sim out nice and easy um the other thing oh yeah this is one more thing too um the sim card size for the net night hook is actually larger than what you have in your iPhone, but you can, let me just, there we go. You can just stick it into the side there, hard up on the side, and it works just fine. So don't worry about the SIM card being a different size. The um, SIM cards actually all have the, um, they all have the same uh, pin out pattern and size it's just literally the plastic outside part that is different so you have no problems if you just push it in i mean we used to take us a couple of goes to get it right sometimes when we first started doing it nowadays it's just muscle memory we just slot it in and it goes every time we take them in and out just all of the time once we're um, on the road we just stick that into the junk drawer there which uh which is right underneath it and happy days so there you go, that's a really cheap, effective way to get internet in potentially both your car and your camper or caravan, and it gives you the flexibility of both Optus and Telstra, and it also allows you to stream stuff to a Chromecast while you're uh, in your caravan or camper. So hopefully that's really helpful to some people and something that a few people haven't thought about doing. Definitely a much cheaper way than the self I go. It allows us to get full coverage of 4G, not just 3G. It allows us to share it with our friends and it also allows us to stream. So a really cool setup for us. Anyway, if you've got any comments, please leave them below. If you've got other ideas or you think I could do something better or you think that I'm full of crap, whatever, put it down the bottom. I love to hear from everybody. It's really interesting to see other points of view. Please remember to subscribe and like this video if you like my stuff and I'll see you in the next one.